Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to learn how to set up distributed availability group in SQL Server 2016. In this video, we'll talk about what is distributed availability group, why it is different than normal availability group that we set up in SQL Server 2014 or even in SQL Server 2016. And the prerequisites are the same as setting up availability group with automatic seeding. That's the requirement of distributed availability group. If you don't know what automatic uh, availability group with automatic seeding is, please watch my previous video. I have uh, discussed all the prerequisites, pros and cons of setting up AG with automatic uh, seeding. And then uh, we will uh, go through the demo. We'll set up a distributed availability group step by step. I have prepared a document which we will publish on our website as well. This is the document I have prepared uh, to discuss some of the steps before we really get into our real demo. Uh, let's talk about uh, the difference between distributed availability group and normal availability group. If you remember in normal availability group, if we wanted to set up our AG, any server that needs to be part of that uh, AG setup uh, whether it's a primary server or secondary server needs to be part of the Windows cluster. In my case, if you look at this uh, picture right here, 2016 prod cluster is one cluster and any server that I want uh, uh, to set up my AG that needs to be part of this cluster. So in this case, in this example, it's a three node cluster. One is primary and other two are secondary. Uh, if there are, is a server that is part of another cluster, we would not be able to um, distribute our database to that particular server, or we would not be able to add that server into that uh, prod cluster. We still can't do that, but we can, with the help of distributed availability group, we can go across the cluster. These are two independent clusters. They have their own primary and secondary. However, if we want, if we want to um, distribute our database from uh, one cluster uh, primary to another cluster uh, primary, we can do that with the help of distributed availability group in 2016. How we do that, uh, we'll talk about that in, in a second. We'll go through the real demo. Let's talk about uh, the high level uh, steps first. So our first step is create uh, availability group on both cluster with auto seeding, with the seeding automatic. What automatic seeding means that you don't have to take the backup and initialize your uh, uh, availability group. SQL Server will do that for you. And it is, it is the requirement of distributed availability uh, uh, group as well. Uh, also, the requirement is that once you set up one AG right here, in my case, auto seed AG1 is one group and all the secondary uh, uh, servers right here, you need to uh, manually join these servers uh, to that particular availability group. So that is the requirement and the permission needs to be that uh, that AG group needs to have create database permission. You know, otherwise, it will not be able to join uh, secondary uh, servers in one cluster. Same thing we need to do on the second cluster for our distributed availability group. In my case, the second cluster is 2016 cluster. And this is my secondary cluster. I call it secondary, and this is my primary cluster. Right now, we're in, at the stage of preparing cluster for distributed availability groups. So in uh, second cluster, AutoSeed AG2 is another group that we will create with uh, automatic seeding. It has its own primary and secondary. Once that's done, we will create the listener uh, for AG1 on one cluster. And then we'll create another listener um, on um, uh, second cluster right here for uh, auto AG to group right here. After that, we'll, this is the third step right here. We will create a distributed availability group. This is the second group. It doesn't do anything, but it helps the, to distribute all the databases uh, once the setup is complete. So we'll create um, on primary cluster right here will create a, a distributed availability group and we will use the listeners from both sides to combine these two clusters so that they can talk to each other so our database will be distributed among across the two clusters so distributed availability group is what basically uh, functions to do that that that's what it helps to do um, all the synchronization and all that once we're done with the setting up everything, we should test our synchronization of databases across both cluster. 
we'll create a cluster uh, database here app we'll put it a uh, part of auto seed ag1 group and we will see that if it flows across the secondaries of this cluster and secondaries of this cluster and then we will test failover so uh let's move on how we do that this these are the detail uh, and i'll just copy it and paste this uh, um, T-SQL right here. Uh, there is no uh, graphic user interface to accomplish this. I mean, to create availability group with auto seeding right now. You have to use uh, uh, T-SQL to create that. So our first step, as I mentioned, create availability group with the automatic seeding on primary replica for primary cluster. And then we will join the secondary of the same cluster. And then we will create a listener and then we'll do the same thing on the secondary cluster, exactly the same thing. And then we'll create the dis uh, distributed availability group on primary cluster. So this is where our distribution setup starts. Uh, the previous steps were the prerequisite to get our database or uh, availability groups ready to be part of a, a, a distributed availability group. But this is where it's really gonna start. So we'll create the uh, distributed avail availability group. This time we'll be using listeners. So listener of cluster one, AG group, and listener of cluster two, AG group. And that's how they're gonna synchronize. One thing I wanted to mention uh, here that uh, it's um, the failover from uh, primary cluster to secondary cluster once the setup is complete is auto uh, is not automatic, it's manual. So you have to manually fail over to the second uh, secondary cluster.